is great to be here. I love Succeed Faster. This is one of my absolute favorite things. And is it okay if I move around? You guys are going to be like, uh, I, I can't stand on the stage. I just have to move around a little bit. But it is so awesome to be here. Anybody else feel like it's not an accident that you're here tonight? Okay, I mean, raise your hands. I, I fully and utterly believe there's no accidents on who's actually in the room. One person tonight, he decided to be here last night. Bought a ticket, got permission to come, and he's here. I'll tell you what, it's amazing. And I, I'll tell you what, there are so many rock stars in this room. I can't wait to see what kind of big dreams happen. And that's what we're going to be doing with this big dream gathering. Uh, we're going to be diving into that a little bit. And in the past, what we've done is I've told a little bit of kind of the big dream gathering Genesis story, kind of how it got started. Because really, it got started as a happy accident. It was as if my, it's, uh, during a time when my wife and I were launching our first company, and things had been going really, really well, and then things started to go really, really poorly in a short amount of time. And we were out of time, and we were out of options, and the big one was we were out of money. And it was a scary time, and I'll never forget, there was a particular Saturday morning when I woke up, and I, and I was thinking, you know what, this is not what I signed up for at all. I was tired, I was scared, I was even embarrassed a little bit. And I thought, man, this was a big dream for me. And it's not playing out the way I thought. And I started to think, you know, I, I bet some of my friends maybe could help with this dream a little bit, but I, I'm not sure quite who could help. And then I started to think, you know what? I don't know a lot of my friends' big dreams. I don't know what they want to do. I don't know what they feel called to do. I don't know what they want to go after. And so I started to hatch this idea, right? I started to think, what if I invited some of our friends over to our house? Just kind of move the furniture, and we invited everybody to write some of their dreams down and post them on the walls and then we can just see, we can move around and look at each other's dreams just to see what everybody's dreams were and to see if we could help each other out. And this is proof positive I married up because we are out of time, out of options, and out of money. And this guy's idea is to throw a party, right? But my wife went for it. We, we threw this thing. We put it together. I sent out an email to about 30 people, and almost all of them showed up, which was really kind of the first indicator, first real kind of piece of evidence that we all have dreams. And this first big dream gathering was just supposed to go for a couple of hours on a Tuesday night. And what wound up happening is we wound up kind of losing control of our house. The first night we knew everybody. Wednesday morning, I kid you not, Adam Carroll called me while we're having breakfast with my family. He calls me, he's like, dude, I'm already at work. He had been there the night before. He's like, I told everybody what we did last night. It's like, okay. They want to come over and post their dreams. Is that okay? It's like, what? You know, but uh, what wound up happening with that first big dream gathering, we lo totally lost control. And basically that next Wednesday night, we had more people, but we only knew half of them. By Thursday night, total strangers were showing up. And then from then on, it just continued on and on. And it went for a full week. By the time I was done, we had dream sheets all over the walls. And what was really amazing was our dream got a boost but so many other dreams got a boost. And I gotta tell you, that was kinda an accident. We really didn't mean for it to happen, but it started to get addictive. And so we started to do it over time. We started to do it more and more. The second one we did in a warehouse. My wife was all for it, but she said never in our house again. So the second one we threw in a warehouse and 300 people showed up. And all these stories started to happen. And that's what I get most excited about is these stories. Like we had a gal named Mandy, she was scared to death. Now, some of you are ready to go. You don't even need me to talk. You see dream sheets on the paper or on the table, and you're like, speaker boy, shut up. Let's get started, right? But some of you are like, I have no idea what I'd write down. Or some of you might be like, I know what I want to write down, but I'm too scared to write it down. Well, that's where Mandy was at. She knew exactly what she wanted to write down. She came to a big dream gathering, put it up on the wall, that she wanted to go help some kids in Mozambique that were living in a garbage dump. Scared her though because she'd never left her state, really never traveled much at all. But these kids, from the minute she heard about them, she wanted to help. She wrote the dream down, got some help at the big dream gathering, but more importantly, she started to put those dream sheets up in different places. She put one up in her house, and she also put one up in her cube at work. And it started to light her workplace up on fire. They started to get uh, behind it. And a coworker or someone that within her organization that didn't even know her gave her a thousand bucks for the trip. That's what happens when people start to walk out their big dreams is it not only helps them, 
but it actually inspires others. We've got all sorts of stories. We've got Kevin Hansen, who came to a Big Dream Gathering. He got the idea of, uh, he wanted to write a book. And he said, dude, I think I'm going to quit my job and write this book. I said, dude, I know your wife. If you do that, she will kill me. You cannot quit your job. He's like, okay. But he wound up getting this idea for a book, and he wound up getting some help on setting up a blog. And within a year, he had 500,000 unique hits. Within a year and a half, he'd written the book based on what had gone on with the blog. Last year, he was featured on Dr. Phil. He was walking out his dream, and he has still not quit his job. Thank you, Kevin, right? Things have gone well. Um, we had April who came, and she said she wanted to lose 100 pounds. I love her dream because she got really specific. She says, not only do I want to lose 100 pounds, but I want to meet Coach Bob. Anybody, anybody uh, Biggest Loser fans? A few. I, the great irony with Biggest Loser is my family loves Biggest Loser, but we usually watch it while we eating pizza and snarfing ice cream. It's the great irony of that show. But she not only lost 100 pounds, she uh, met Bob Harper. Um, is this mic OK? Sounds a little, is it OK? OK, cool. Um, we had uh, Carly. She came. She had a big dream of building a well in Africa. Her, uh, her mom was a single parent. They didn't have a lot of money. She found a system where they could go and build a well in Africa for about $3,500. But that might as well have been $3 million. She didn't have it. She wrote it down, though. She started to think about what did she have in place? What did she still need? She actually got, some, uh, got the idea of selling something to her, at her school. She got 1,600 bracelets, sold them for 200 bucks. There is now a well in a village in Africa with Carly and her classmates' names on it. She got an award for being the uh, uh, volunteer, or excuse me, the young professional of the year in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's because she was willing to walk out a big dream. I love stories like that. There was, we did a big dream gathering in uh, Duquesne with Lindsay, right? Sam was one of those that wasn't quite sure what he was going to put up, but he wound up not only being brave enough to put up some dreams, but walked around, connected with people. He wanted to have an internship. He wanted to live in New York. Guess where he is today? New York City. Could, he would have loved to come, but he's actually worked for the 911 Foundation, or 911, excuse me, 911 Foundation um, in New York City today. And it was because he was willing to not only put up his dream, but connect with some of the people in the room. These kind of get addictive, right? I mean, this is one, one of my favorites. We did a big dream gathering at Drake recently, and this gal, her name was Susan, came up. Sometimes what I'll do is we'll do big dream hot seats, where after you put up your dream, we'll ask a couple of people come up, to come up and share your dream. Now, Susan came up, and I would say, I wouldn't say this to her, but I would say she's probably in her late 30s, right? Uh, she had a skirt on that went all the way to the floor. Very conservative, very nice. She came up and, and, you know, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And I said, you know, what's one of the big dreams you're working on or what, what's one of the big dreams you'd love to go after? She said, I want to learn how to work on muscle cars. No kidding. Awesome, Susan. I said, uh, that's, that's awesome. You may need to lose the scarf. I'm a little concerned about that getting locked in the motor or whatnot. Can anybody help her? Somebody in the room was having his 67 classic Mustang restored all summer. She spent in the summer with that guy who's restoring her Mustang. She flipped out, super, super excited. As you can imagine, it gets exciting. It's kind of one of the weirdest ways to live a life, and it's kind of one of the weirdest jobs, but this is what we get to do now. We get to go and do these big dream gatherings. This is a big part of what we get to do. And so I'm stoked about that, and that's what we want to do tonight. And as we do that, I want to kind of talk about the logistics of how the Big Dream Gathering works, so you guys are comfortable with it. In fact, if you want to, go ahead and grab uh, at least one copy of the Dream Sheets. You're going to want probably multiple ones. Nick's already probably got 10 done. Look at that. I love it. Um, so we're going to talk kind of logistics, some of the big dreams, and uh, also some keys to setting magnetic goals. But first, I love it. First, I want to get your permission, though. You guys are in a room. You guys are in a room of rock stars. You guys are rock stars, right? But I, I came across the uh, concept here recently. The concept is outliers. Anybody read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers? Fantastic book. Uh, it's one of those things where sometimes you're really impacted by a book, and sometimes you're just impacted by the title. Anybody have that? Right? Once I heard about the concept of outliers, basically the concept is, is anytime you look at a group of people, there's usually like a scatter graph of people, there's usually kind of a big bolus dose of people. Whether you look at talents, 
passions, skills, interests, there's usually a big glob of people right in the middle of a graph, kind of like this. And then there's usually an outlier or two. Now, what's interesting about outliers is a lot of times, outliers, depending on the category, feel weird, right? Because they kind of, they don't necessarily feel like everybody else. They don't necessarily act like everybody else. And I can tell you without, without a doubt, this room is full of outliers. You guys are the weirdos. <laughs> you guys are weird in all of the right ways. You guys are weird in all the ways that change the world. But sometimes outliers don't necessarily get celebrated. Sometimes outliers are misunderstood. I mean, sometimes when you're at the swimming pool party, I don't know about you, but I have somewhat, and this may come as a total shock, but I've somewhat been an excitable person in my life. I mean, surprise, right? Exactly. Now, I was also that guy that a lot of times people were like, chill, settle, right? <laughs> settle, right? And sometimes that was probably a good thing. But a lot of times, over time, that started to be the thing of, I couldn't really be myself. I wanted to be excited. I wanted to be passionate. But a lot of times I would get shut down because I was an outlier. Anybody ever feel that? Yeah, I bet we all have in our own ways, our own skill sets. I know if you're here, you fought to get here. In some way, somehow, you fought to get here. That means you're passionate. You may not have any idea what your big dreams are. You may have come here to kind of sort that out. And if that's you, that's awesome. But I would say, can we have the agreement to get weird? over this weekend. Can I, get a, can I get an amen and a hand raise for we all getting weird up in here? This is a safe place to be weird. This is a safe place to be an outlier. That's what we're talking about, okay? So it's weird to talk about our big dreams. It's weird to write them down. It's not the norm. A lot of times it makes people uncomfortable. So we have to kind of give ourselves, we have to start with giving ourselves that permission to be weird. So that's what we're going to start to move into, is getting weird and maybe even a little weirder, right? Okay, so basically the way this starts is I'm going to walk you through, as we do this, I'm going to walk you through kind of the logistics of the big dream, big dream gathering. It's a really simple thing. I'm a simple guy. My book has drawings in it. I'm that simple, okay? So here's the dream sheets. Everybody got one? I want you to hold it up if you got one. And if you don't, Everybody look around the room, make sure somebody's holding it up. Good, good, good. Awesome. So logistics, pretty simple. Now, upper left-hand corner, you're going to see a thing. There's an open blank, and that is for your dreamer number. If you look at your name tag, which I don't have on right now, you should see a dreamer number or a number down below in the what would be left-hand, right-hand, bottom right-hand corner. You better have good eyesight to see that bad boy. But the whole reason for that is that is for you to know and for you to be able to then write down in your dream sheets. But if you want to post your dreams anonymously, use that number. And now, here's the thing. Put that number on all of your dream sheets because that's also the way that we're going to pull them down and get them back to you. But put that number on your dream sheet, and that goes up here. Now, if you want to, you can put your name, you can put your contact information, all that stuff up here. But I can tell you, writing your dream down feels like a risk. Can I get an amen? Because sometimes when you write it down, what does that mean? People are going to hold you accountable to it, right? Maybe, just maybe, or maybe it just makes it a little bit more real. I know there are some heart-thumping big dreams in here. You know what those heart-thumping big dreams are? Like, you just write it down, and it's like, oh, oh, right? I mean, it might take you to the other side of the world. It might be connecting with somebody. It might that be that big dream, that big job, whatever it is, right? Those are heart-thumpers. Sometimes it makes it easier when you can make it anonymous. So write that dreamer number down. And then we get to the describe one of your big dreams. That's it. Describe one of your big dreams. Now, I highly, we made this box kind of small. You don't put a whole business plan in here. Although at some big dream gatherings, we'll get whole business plans stapled to these things. Sometimes we'll get whole re, like real estate development plans stapled to the back of these, all, all this. But it's not meant to be a novel. You just want to write some of your big dreams. Now, I will tell you right now, you can write as many big dreams down as you want to. Our current record holder is a nine-year-old redhead from Waterloo, Iowa. 31 dreams in one big dream gathering. Now, I asked him, because at that big dream gathering, I'd thrown out our, our record, previous record holder. It had 28 in one big dream gathering. So when Ian brought me all of them in this big stack, I was like, dude, how many? 31. 
right? I said, why 31? He's like, anybody could do 30. Like, amen, brother, that's the way to go. So you can put as many up as you want to, but here's the thing, keep one dream to a sheet. Now you can get as specific or as broad as you want to. Be as broad as you want to to start out. I mean, if it's just about travel, that's great. Write that down. If it's whatever it is, you can, you can start off by being as broad as you want to. The biggest thing is, is just give yourself that permission to get started. You can write some of your simplest dreams down. I will tell you, I made a mistake. One of my mistakes is I called it the Big Dream Gathering. A better name for it would be to dream the dream a big, see, I can't even say it now, Dream Big Gathering. Because sometimes people wonder, is this dream big enough to put on the wall? Don't worry about that. Just get started. Just allow yourself to write some of those things down. Start the process. It's amazing to see what happens when people do. And we get all sorts of dreams that get written down. And we have all sorts of crazy things that happen when they do. We had Stephanie. She did a big dream gathering. She came to a big dream gathering at the University of Iowa. She put down some business things. She put down some career things. But one of the things she put down was she said, I want to learn how to sail. Wanted to learn how to sail. Sail competitively, sail, race sailboats. Anybody interested in that? Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So she said, I want to learn how to sail. The reason why she's holding that and smiling so big is on her dream sheet, there was an entrepreneur who wrote, I have a 21-foot yacht I will give you. She came up and she said, I have a boat. <laughs> I have a boat. Now, what was hilarious is 30 minutes later, she came up kind of quietly, I have a boat. I have a boat. She was a senior at the University of Iowa. It excited her and scared her all at the same time. What I love about Stephanie's story, though, is she took it. She received it. But she also had to work her butt off. She went, she was a senior, and she went to the yachting club at the University of Iowa. Yes, we have a yachting club in Iowa. Hello. But she went, and it was almost all freshmen and sophomores. And part of her was like, no, I will not do this. She's like, I will not lower myself to be with freshmen. And then she's like, wait, this is one of my dreams. I'm sticking around, right? And she did. And she learned how to sail, and now she's sailing her own boat. How freaking cool is that, right? That's awesome. I said, I get at least one boat ride. At least one. Right? But wait until she's a little better at sailing. You know, one of the things is that people go, okay, does it need to be specific? Does it need to be broad? Yes. It can be as broad as you want. But sometimes getting specific is powerful too. This, this actually is a picture taken from my iPhone. Now, what's especially fun about this for me is this is sand in Sydney, Australia. I took this two weeks ago. One of my big dreams for a number of years, my brother lives in Sydney. And one of my big dreams has been to go to Sydney. Now, one of the things that I found for me was there was a lot of things to line up. There was a lot of things to make that happen because I didn't want to just go by myself. I wanted to take my whole family and we wanted to do it right. One of the dreams that I wrote down in one of the most recent Big Dream gatherings is I said, I want to write down, I want to draw a dream in the sand in Sydney. I got a little bit more specific. Now, I wouldn't say that it was like magical poof, and in 30 days, I was on the beach of Sydney. But I do know that there was something about being a little bit more specific that made it just a little bit more powerful for me. So if you only get broad on some of your dreams, I want to travel more, that's okay. But maybe you want to draw something in the sands of some beach somewhere in the world, and if it's that specific, that'd be awesome too. You can get as specific or be as broad as you want to, but it can be powerful when we get specific. You know, it's interesting, Andrea came to a big dream gathering we did at uh, Grandview University. She wrote down, she got very specific. She had a big, big goal of working at Pixar. Any, friend, any fans of Pixar? I will admit it, I geek out on Pixar. All right, okay, Monsters University just came out, uh, one of the most successful production companies in the world. She not only wanted to work at Pixar, she picked out, she knew of a specific department at Pixar. She found out about a specific department at Pixar that was doing stuff that just totally lined up, totally jazzed her beyond words. But she watched Pixar, according to her, she said she watched Pixar's website for job postings constantly. And this one department never had anything. It was a really small, really intimate department. Most people apparently don't even know about it. She posted that. Not only did I want to work at Pixar, she actually posted that she wanted to write for uh, work at this one particular department. 
Now, at that big dream gathering, there's only 200 people there. Two people knew specific people in that department, and within a week, she was talking with them. Now, still working out what might happen, but I just love that. Not only did she have the guts to write it down, but there were two people who were enthusiastically supportive and had some connections to help her. You just never know, especially when you're a room filled with rock stars. I mean, we have big dream gatherings all over the place, and it's always awesome people, but this is a higher level of awesome, right? Look around the room. Do you agree? A higher level of... I better get an amen on that. Amen. There we go. All right. Preach it, right? Okay. So you can get as specific as you want to. Now, along the way, I'm going to pepper in a couple things of keys to what I call magnetic goals. You've all set goals, and sometimes they have just been unbelievably hard to go after. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it feels like you're running in glue. But sometimes you set a goal, and it's like a magnet. It just keeps drawing you forward, and I think there are certain things that we can do to increase the chance of having magnetic goals. Now, one of them is what I say, get awesome. I'll tell you what, uh, when I was on the beach at Sydney, when we went just a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was winter in Sydney. And when we looked at the forecast, it was supposed to rain and be cold almost the whole time. Now, I think through a little divine intervention, uh, the weather channel was wrong. And when we got there, most days it was sunny and 65. My 13-year-old looks like a beach bum. He was born here in Chicago, but he looks like a beach bum. He looks like he should be covering a surfboard. So when we got to the beach, he saw it. We were all in jeans. We were ready for winter. You know what he did? I turned around, and I saw this blonde freak just run by me. You know what he did? Right into the ocean. He's like, Dad, we're in Sydney. That's the ocean. Yeah? See ya! Boom! Right? And so afterwards, we had to go to a surf shop and get him some clothes because we had some, the whole day to do. So we went to a Billabong surf shop on Manly Beach. Now, this is Crispin. And when I walked in, I'm always looking for awesome. I just love and I want to appreciate everybody's got awesome. you got awesome, right, man? Got a little bit. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit awesome. you got a lot of awesome. We've all got awesome. So I'm always looking for awesome. When we walk in, Crispin greets us. And he's like, oh, I can't pull off a great Australian action. I wish I could. But he's like, you know, uh, how are you doing? And now, how's it go? How are you going? That's how they say it. How are you going? And I said, oh, we're doing great. And he said, oh, where are you from? I said, oh, we're from the United States. And he said, oh, 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 how are you doing? I said, we're doing great. He's like, oh, that's great, man. How can I help you? And so we talked for a little bit. He showed us around and all that kind of stuff. And then I watched Crispin go and greet the next person. They walked in, and they were Asian-looking, and he greeted them, and he said, where are you from? And they said, Japan. And he then stopped, and he greeted them in Japanese. I watched Crispin play this out. Somebody from Thailand came in, he greeted them in Thai. It's just amazing. So I pulled him aside. I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, what do you mean? I said, I watched you greet people from four or five different countries now, with a different, unique greeting from their country. And he's like, you really want to know? I said, absolutely. And he took me to this book that was behind the counter. This book had 39 different greetings from 39 different countries. And he said, I'm just memorizing greetings and goodbyes. And he's like, I'm going to get to 60 by the end of the year. Is that awesome? That's awesome. Why? Because he wants to be awesome. I think we can all raise our level of awesome. I told Chris, I'm like, man, you inspired me to try to get more awesome. Because so I say, bring in your awesome daily, that's a choice. But when you guys do it, it changed the freaking world. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Absolutely. And we already are awesome. But I think this weekend's going to help us to bring that awesome at whole new levels. And that's what it's all about. So I just challenge you tonight, this weekend, up your level of awesome commit to that. And here's one thing with that, though. I put in a little caveat. Don't compare your awesome to anybody else's awesome in the room. Can we, can we agree to do that? Because I don't know about you, but I have a little problem with that. I go, maybe my awesome's not as good as your awesome. And that makes me feel bad about my awesome. But then when I feel bad about my awesome, I don't bring my awesome. But when you don't compare to somebody else's awesome, all you do is commit to your own awesome. Right, James? Bring that awesome? Absolutely. Then you can bring that awesome consistently. So I say whatever it is, wherever you're at, start where you're at. Decide what does that mean for you, and then bring it. 
All right, so that's the next thing. Now, you know, there, there are, I could, I could pick out so many alumni in here to talk about examples of bringing awesome, but I wanted to bring just one example. You're going to hear more, but this is Quran. Where's Quran? There it is, right on. So Quran came to our first, big, our first Succeed Faster in Chicago in 2011. And he was already bringing awesome, there's no doubt. But when he came in, one of the first things that he wrote down, he wanted to write, he wanted to work for a consulting firm, one of the top consulting firms. But then we had a conversation and said, he was like, I said, who would you love to work for? Who would you love to work for? He was like, McKinsey and Company. He named it right then and there. Like, oh man, why not? And there were a number of things that made that seem pretty much impossible. The Quran brought us awesome. They didn't come to Purdue to recruit. So he had some obstacles right off the start, but he kept bringing his awesome. And what's cool is it's, what was it, last year? Started to work for McKinsey and Company. What I love is when uh, they were talking about Quran's story, he said he scored his dream job. What's cool about Quran, because he kept bringing his awesome, he's actually scored two dream jobs in about a year and a half, because not only was he working for McKinsey and Company, that also brought him to LinkedIn, which then also took him to San Francisco. I say, is that not awesome? That is awesome, because he committed to bringing awesome. He continues to bring awesome, and all of you can do that. All of you. I mean, I just start to wonder, you know, what if? What's your, what are some of those things you want to do? What are some of those maybe dream goals, dream aspirations? What if you brought your awesome, and what might that look like? For you. I can't wait to see it because I know the ripple effects of that. We're going to feel them for a long, long time. All right, next thing, as far as logistics, go back to logistics here. Think about categories. Now, if you noticed, many of you probably did, there's uh, little signs up on the walls. And what we've got is we've got big dream categories. And what these do is this allows us to kind of group dreams a little bit. What we found is that uh, not only does that help with organization, but it also starts to open up opportunity. It starts to, more importantly, starts to open up possibility. Some of our dream categories are a business category, career, travel, media, family and relationships, Holla, right? Uh, education, government, uh, service, spiritual. My personal favorite is the dreams that defy categorization category. You just never know what's going to go in there. That is a category to watch. We just did one at a university and uh, we had a bunch of people come up afterwards and a gal came up and she was probably I don't know, maybe 27, 28, a young professional, very polished, came to a big dream gathering in a suit. I mean, it was very cool. And I was like, so um, what's one of your big dreams? And she, you know, business cut, business shoes, the whole thing, bag, purse, go together. You know what I'm talking about. I said, so what's one of your big dreams? She said, not going to believe it. I was like, try me. She's like, I want to be a rapper. <laughs> I was like, um, okay, was anybody in the room expecting that? She's like, um, I was like, so, you know, tell me about it. She talked about how somebody challenged her once to do it, and so she set out to do it, like just memorize a song. She said, I watched rappers, I watched YouTube rappers and all this kind of stuff. And I said, and I don't always do this, I don't want to put people on the spot, plus sometimes they suck. And so it's kind of embarrassing. But I was like, um, hey, uh, would you rap for us? And she's like, uh-huh. And I was kind of like, this is going to be really interesting. So I gave her the mic. And you know what she did? She wrapped her lungs out. And it was awesome. It was so awesome. I was like, that one, which one did you put that in? She's like, dreams that defy categorization category. Like, amen, sister. So just know, I mean, the categories are there to kind of help to organize groups a little bit. But they're also there to open up possibilities. Megan actually had a little bit of this experience. Megan, did you raise your hand? If you haven't met Reg Megan, you need to meet Megan. She put up a big dream in uh, the business category, career category, about basically wanted an internship. And then she also put up a big dream about travel and wanted to travel, especially uh, kind of had an interest in Germany. Someone in the room said, hey, why don't you link those two? What if you went and did an internship internationally? What if, you know, you pursued that? Now, Megan... Is awesome. She's always been awesome. But at that first big dream gathering, I would say a little tentative. Would you agree? Slightly tentative. So even writing some of those big dreams down felt like a huge risk. But she asked, what if? And why not? So she couldn't be here last summer. You know where she was? She was in Berlin. Is that awesome? Let's hear a round of applause for me. 
she got to work. Um, wait, I mean, she got to explore Germany, and she got to work, and it is amazing, her story. You need to find out about her story, and so many of you have great stories, and you're going to launch even greater stories that just say, what if? What if you gave yourself that permission to write some of your dreams down? What if you explored some of the categories and allowed yourself to open up possibility? Because I'm guessing that all of you maybe have at least one dream that you might put down, but what if you started to explore some of those other categories? What if you gave yourself permission to walk around a little bit? What if you challenged yourself to say, hey, I want to put a big dream up in every category? I brought a couple of t-shirts. The person who has the most dream sheets up gets it. So, fair enough? That cool? Now, I, I said one of the other reasons that we did put up categories is so that we can group dreams. And one of the categories to watch is the defy categorization category. One of the big reasons for that is we want to see if maybe you might just be able to walk out some of your big dreams together. We had that happen in San Antonio where a bunch of crazies put up on the wall that they wanted to skydive. And all of a sudden they decided that maybe, just maybe, they could skydive together. Right, Katie? Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, and that, that excited me and scared me because I'm like, how awesome would it be that they walked that out? And how horrible would it be if somebody died, right? <laughs> but they went after it, and they started to walk it out. Now, Amanda's not here, but Katie's here, all of She will be here in a little bit, right? And yeah, she's already reserved, I think, 20 dream sheets. And then Calvin, again, and say, hey, hey, Calvin, right? So they got together, and they said, let's do this. And you know what happened was they actually walked it out. They set a date, and then they flip and jumped out of a plane, and thank you, Lord, they all lived. Was it awesome? Unbelievable? What is one of the next ones? Get my skydiving license. Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to go skydiving with Katie? We might be able to hook that up, so let's make that happen, right? Now, here's what's, what a small world it is, though, when you pursue big dreams. That big dream got launched at, a, at the Succeed Faster in San Antonio. I was bragging about them at a big dream gathering last week, and the gal over there on the far side, she's like, wait, I think I know them. I was like, oh, no, that's cool. She's like, no, I think I was in that plane. I was with them. That's how small this was. Uh, Megan Watts, or as AC calls her, Mega Watts, right, was there, and she jumped out of the plane with them. And that's, I think, one of the other examples of the ripple effect of when we dream, right? Because sometimes when we dream, it's for us, but most of the time, it's also for others. So I doubt, with talking with Megan, if she'd done it. I know that was a big dream for her, but it's one of those things that it was dreaming big together and walking it out together that's made it possible. So no, you know, sometimes it feels a little selfish to think about some of our own big dreams, but I can tell you as we do it, we set other people free to walk theirs out too. So it's almost selfish to not do it. Amen? See how I did that? Flip that over, right? Absolutely. So, what categories are you going to walk out tonight? What categories are you going to explore? How about you? Where are you going to, what, what are some of those dreams? And what if you allowed yourself that freedom to explore that a little bit? All right, so, another key. Um, any foodies in here? Love to cook, right? Love to, what do you love to cook? What do you love to cook? What's some? What's that? You love to eat it. That's just as good. I love it. How about you? What? You love to bake? Awesome. Uh, what else? What does somebody else like to cook? What do you like to cook? Everything? Okay. Awesome. I am not. I butcher stuff in the kitchen. I'm dangerous in the kitchen. But you know, I was thinking some, about something the other day. I was cutting up some mushrooms. Mushrooms are fungus, right? And they're gross. They're ugly. But who loves mushrooms? Love mushrooms, right? You know what I was thinking about? The key with mushrooms is somebody got hungry. One of the biggest keys to walking out big dreams is getting hungry, right? Because when you think about it, the whole reason we have portobello mushrooms, the reason why we have calamari, the reason why we eat oysters is someone at some point was so freaking hungry that they ate the ugly stuff, right? That's what we've got to be when we go after our dreams. We've got to get hungry. And that's one of the parts of being weird, because the world doesn't necessarily want you to be hungry, because you being hungry sometimes make people a little uncomfortable. Sometimes you being hungry makes them wonder what they should be hungry about. 
Sometimes that inspires them and sometimes that makes them feel bad. But hey, that's their problem, not yours. The key is to get hungry. What are you feeling called to be hungry about? What are you feeling called to explore? What are you feeling called to do that maybe scares you just a little bit or scares you a lot? I can tell you, you can get hungry. You've got to get hungry to do that. One of the things is to, I always say, if, especially if you're wanting to explore a big dream you're not quite sure about, and if some of you are interested in entrepreneurial stuff, maybe you're interested in starting your own business, or maybe some of you want to go corporate or medical or education, but you're not quite sure, I always say find ways to experiment. Find ways to experiment. Spend time with people that are doing it. Find organizations that inspire you and try to meet with people. And do this, not when you necessarily need a job, although you can do that too, but find ways to experiment. Or if you're interested in starting a, a company or launching a product, I, I, I totally agree with what was said earlier to a point. But one of the things is, I have to totally and utterly disagree. There is no way to eliminate all risk. There's no way. Can I get an amen? amen. So I love that thought, but if you wait till all risk is gone, you will never start. So I say find ways to experiment. One of the reasons that we were on the ropes at that first Big Dream Gathering is I had gotten an idea for a product. And one of the things that we did first was we experimented. We didn't go all in at first. We did later, and that was part of the problem. But when we first started, though, we experimented a lot. Find ways to experiment. Meet with people. Talk with people. Research, but find ways to experiment. Get hands-on. One of the other ways to get hungry, but to make sure you're going to walk it out, I always say is find your why. Find your why. Why is it that you want to do something? Why is it that you want to go after it? Mandy, who was horrified to go to the other side of the planet and help those kids, she knew her reason why. She's like, I just want to help them. I feel called to help these kids I don't even know, but she was passionate. Her why made all the difference. And I always say, if you know your why, your how will always come. If you're determined enough to know your why, your how will always come. David Ram or Dave Ramsey, anybody familiar with Dave Ramsey? He's kind of a financial guru, great speaker. He was talking to a group of people, and it was about 1,000 people. And he threw out, he said, I've got a 50-pound bag of sand. He said, who would be willing to walk 10 miles with this 50-pound bag of sand? One crazy guy in the back is like, Ooh! right? Like, shut up, you would not. He said, now let me change the question. I have a nine-year-old girl. She weighs 50 pounds. She's sick. She needs to make it to a doctor. But you've got to walk 10 miles. Who'd be willing to do it? How many hands do you think went up in the room? Everybody. He said, that's the difference. That's the power of why. He said, when you know your why, you will find your how. And that's what I just suggest with you, is to think about some of your dreams, but also to think about why they're important to you. Because as you do that, as you know your why, the how will come. All right, one of the last things we'll talk about on the dream sheet here is you can see there's two small boxes underneath the describe your dream. And that is, that's a place for you to think about some of the things you have in place and some of the things you still need. Now, it's not a huge space, but it gets you thinking a little bit. Now, uh, I love kids and I love when they dream. We had a nine year old boy, he came, he said he wanted to be a marine biologist and a jet fighter pilot. Now, the things he said he had in place is he was good in school and he'd work hard. The thing he still needed? A jet. Awesome, right? I mean, that's simple, right? But I tell you what, what are some of those things that you have in place? What are some of those things that you still need? You know, a lot of times people, when they think about their dreams, they kind of wonder, okay, what do I put there? Do I have anything? Do I really have anything in place? And I would say, you know, something to think about is what, what are some of those steps that you have? What are some of those steps that you might need? I mean, to think about what are some of those steps that you might need to use to walk out some of those big dreams? What are some small but significant things that you have? You know, for some, they're like, I don't know. But I would say for all of you, who's got passion in here? Right? Amen, right? Passion should be at least on that list for everyone. If you're passionate enough to write it down, give yourself the credit. But I'm also guessing with the firepower that we have in here, this list of what you have in place, is long. Sure, the things that we don't have probably jump to the forefront of our thinking, but give yourself some credit. What do you have? You're going to have some amazing network. 
Okay? After this weekend, you're going to have an incredible network to work with. You're going to have incredible friends. Maybe you write that down. But you also got skills, talents, passion. All right? So that's something. Start there at the very least. But also think about what are some of those things that you might still need? What are some of those small but significant things you might still need? What's kind of exciting about the Big Dream Gathering, and I also want to just give you permission, is sometimes when we think about our dreams, some of the things that we want to do or aspire to do, sometimes it's actually we're tempted to want to hide some of those things we don't have yet, some of those things we don't have in place yet. Sometimes we're tempted to kind of do that, right? Because that might mean that there's a shortfall somewhere, that we're, we're not enough to walk that dream out. But at the same time, what I want to encourage you is to think just a little bit differently about that. Because a lot of times... What you still need is someone else's big dream. And by you putting that out there, a few things that you might still need, you might actually allow somebody else to help walk out their dream. You know, I'll give you an example. Calvin, who's back in the back of the room. Again, wave your hand. Yeah, he's going to be speaking tomorrow. You need to know Calvin. Calvin's got one of the most amazing stories, and it's an inspiring story. But Calvin's one of these that has been walking out some of his big dreams as of late. And what's been amazing was he realized that a part of it was to walk out and build a business that he wasn't tied to day in and day out. Right? He wanted to walk out a business where he could go to the other side of the planet and shoot video in Africa. Who thinks that sounds a little cool? Right? Which also allowed him to walk out one of his other big dreams was to climb Kilimanjaro. Now, what's cool about that is, is that one of his needs, also one of the things that he needed to put in place was surrounding himself by awesome people. Alex, wave your hand. That's Alex. Alex also came alongside Calvin. They've been walking out some of these dreams. Calvin needing someone to help him walk out his big dreams allowed Alex to walk out some of his big dreams as well. It's something that's this thing about we don't have to hide those things we need because the things we may need may actually allow somebody else to walk out their dreams as well. So what are some small but significant steps you can take? Be thinking about that. You don't have to fill them all in. That doesn't have to be extensive, but it's a good place to start. Think about some of those things you need, some of the things you still, uh, they have in place, some of the things you still need. A couple of last magnetic goals. One of these things, and I want to set this up as we're thinking about the things we may need, thinking about a plan and those types of things. I'm, I'm fresh off this trip to Sydney. And uh, my brother's been in Sydney for a couple of years now. And uh, I went with him into the city. And one of the things that was interesting is he's working with an organization that's right downtown Sydney. And we were moving, and I kind of went with him for a day and kind of did what he does. And at one point, we're walking down this alley. And I feel like we are totally and utterly lost. Because, I mean, Sydney's a big city, you know, tall buildings, the whole thing. It feels a lot like Chicago. But my brother is maneuvering it like he knows it inside and out. I was like, dude, how did you get to know this city so fast? I mean, it's amazing. You know what he said? He said, I was willing to get lost. He said, whenever I was working with somebody and they needed something done or they needed something to go be picked up or whatever, he said, I took the task because I wanted to go find it. He said, most of the time, I would actually get lost. But then I'd get found. And it was amazing because he knows Sydney better than many natives do because he was willing to get lost. He was willing to say, I know the destination, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get there. So I'd say, hey, what if we were willing to get lost once in a while? Set up a destination, but be willing to explore it without necessarily knowing exactly where or how we're going to get there. So I say with that, I mean, with that tonight especially, it's totally and utterly okay to dream, to write down a dream, to post a dream, and have no idea how it might happen. You have no idea how it might play out. Kind of release yourself of having a plan, a full-fledged plan tonight, because when you do that, you can kind of take quantum leaps in dreaming big, all right? So again, what if we gave ourselves that permission to do that? One of the last things is, I want to say, uh, get sweaty. Um, Thomas Edison, who's one of my heroes, anybody love Thomas Edison? One of the, our country's great inventors. He was known for saying genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Now, I don't totally agree with his math, but I do agree that we do have to work hard. If I was going to say this, I would say this. It takes you a second. Asoff, it is in the name of a Russian comment, uh, you know, cosmonaut. It is how hard you're going to need to work in order to make some of your dreams happen. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Amen. Right? And a lot of times what's interesting is the new norm has become to not work hard. 
Unless somebody tells you, you don't work hard. I believe this group chooses. We choose to work hard, right? We would choose to work our ass off from time to time because that's what it takes. So we need to promise ourselves or commit to ourselves that we're going to be willing to work hard. We say hard work trumps talent when talent doesn't work hard, right? So again, committing that and being able to say, okay, how do we get to it? Now, here's the thing. Think about the ideas, suggestions, encouragement, and that's our last box. This is our last category. Now, here on the bottom, you can see this big open space. And what this is all about is this is where you can write comments, suggestions, uh, motivation to other people that are dreaming. Maybe you see a dream that you love or that you're inspired by. Or maybe you just like it. You're like, that's an awesome dream. Or maybe you've got an idea. We've got a lot of talent. We've got a lot of skill. We've got a lot of history in this room. So maybe you can write some things that would inspire or help or support some of your other big dreamers. It's so right down there. And I always say, you know, a lot of times we need inspiration, don't we? Right? And sometimes what we need, when, especially when it comes to inspiration, is we need to give inspiration. One of the most inspiring things we can do is to help inspire others. And that, that's what this box is about. And actually, for a lot of people, it's kind of a surprise, but it starts to get addictive. So in a little bit, I'll have you guys, we're going to, in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to have you start writing some of those down, start posting them. And I'm going to ask that, I'm going to challenge you, encourage you, whatever, cajole you to write down at least one big dream, to post at least one big dream, and to encourage at least one other big dreamer. Now, one thing that we have noticed over the years of doing big dream gatherings is something that we, uh, that we call is the art gallery, out art gallery phenomenon. When some people post their dreams on the wall, they do become like art. They're like pieces of art. I mean, it's dreams on the wall, right? But we start to get the art gallery phenomenon where people start to do this, where they look at the dreams, but they don't write on them. The whole idea with this is to write all over each other's dreams. And it might be just something as simple as this is an awesome dream, or I believe in this dream. I can't wait to see this dream happen, because an inspiring word is magical. But also think about some of those dreams. Maybe you've got an idea for them. Maybe you've got a website they should visit. Maybe you've got somebody they should connect with. Now, if you see a dream that maybe you want to connect with the person, don't leave your dreamer number with that. Put your contact information down, your Twitter handle, your email, your phone number, whatever it is. But don't leave your dreamer number in the encouragement section because we keep that confidential so they won't be able to track you down. So if you do want to leave a comment where you connect with somebody, make sure you leave your contact information. Got it? Good? Awesome. So let's get inspired as we do it. <laughs> One last thing. One last kind of key to going after magnetic goals. Uh, yeah, does anybody know Bruce? Is Bruce? Bruce isn't here yet, is he? He's, he's coming though, isn't he? He's not? Oh, bummer. This is Bruce. You see him? See where he's at? He's about three inches from death. I saw this on Facebook. I was like, Bruce, you posted it, so I know you're alive, but tell me you're okay. And he's like, Tch, nothing. I was in meetings the next day. So that's awesome. But I always say, you know, a key to walking out some of our big dreams is to get scared once in a while. Get scared. I say intentionally do something that scares the shiznits out of you once in a while. You don't have to do it all the time, but intentionally do that. I don't know if you want to go head to head with a bull like Bruce, but do something that scares you once in a while. And for some of us, that's going to be posting dreams tonight. Who at least knows somebody that could imagine that it's maybe a little scary to post a dream, right? We all can feel that a little bit. But it's that whole thing of what if you gave yourself that permission to do something that scared you a little bit. Now, I will also say that part of it's writing down our dreams, part of it's writing on each other's dream sheets, but part of it's also walking around the room and asking someone else, what's one of your big dreams? Talking with them. But with that, I know there's some introverts in the room. How many people would classify yourself as an extrovert? Okay, how many are introverts? Awesome, about half and half, maybe a little less than half on the introvert side. Now with the introverts, it may be hard to believe, but I am an introvert. I am an introvert who has learned to be extroverted. I am a high functioning introvert, <laughs> is what they call me, right? And one of the things is, is that when I first started doing stuff like that, this is God's hilarious sense of humor in that my job is to do events where I'm with people all the time, right? And I can tell you, when I first started to network and connect people, I mean, I loved connecting with people, but it scared the shiznits out of me to be in a room like this. And somebody gave me a great piece of advice, and that's kind of what I want to leave, leave you with as we start to move in. If you ever get nervous about being in a big room, 
If you ever get nervous about connecting with people, because it's magical when we do, I want to give you something to kind of work with. As you're meeting new people, focus on being interested, not interesting. So often we want to be interesting to the person, but if you try to be, if you focus on being interested, asking someone tonight about one of their big dreams, finding out why that's important to them, where it started, it's amazing to see what that does to start, especially if you're nervous at all about connecting with people, but it's also amazing to do, see what happens with your network as it starts to expand. And I'd also say play a game. Talk with someone about their big dream tonight and see if you can connect them with somebody in the room that maybe has a similar or complementary dream. Just play a game with it, it's almost like a puzzle. Meet as many people as you can and try to connect as many people in this room as you can and just see where it takes you. I mean, really the question is, how about you? Are you ready? Are you ready to put some dreams up? Yeah? I mean, how about now? Shall we say, uh, uh, let's do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start moving into the big dream. Now, I need a commitment though. I need to commit, I need at least everybody to commit to write at least one big dream down. And get a hand, actually, let's stand up. If you stand up, write, you're gonna write at least one dream and encourage at least one dreamer. Can I get an amen? Yeah. All right, let's do this thing. Give yourself a round of applause and let's get to this.